Good morning. Good morning, Desert Hot Springs. Good morning. This is Tuesday, May 28th, 2019. And we had a wonderful, beautiful Memorial Day weekend. It was a little windy on Saturday, I guess it was. No, Sunday. Sunday was really windy. But coming to you live here from Desert Hot Springs, California, and I'm here to uh, go run down the daily news that we see come up on the on the national news, local news, and, and a lot of stuff that potentially affects us here in Desert Hot Springs. And uh, I love doing this. I love coming up here in the morning and uh, and having a great great time doing this. This is this is uh, been a joy to build and a joy to be with you in the morning uh, through our technological devices and uh, ways we connect. Uh, oh, it's going to take a sip. You know what I like watching? I like watching the, um, what's that morning show? I don't even know what station it is. But there are, they, they do like a Facebook live video feed when they're, when they're down, when they're waiting for the next scene to come up. There's a blonde haired woman and a, and a there's a guy in the middle they do it's, it's one of the main stations I think it's KMIR maybe but um, I like watching those sometimes they uh, they have their their iPad set up pointing at them and then they go live and you you'll see them whisper into the camera and whisper into the iPad when the guys doing the weather across the same room in the studio I love watching that it's fun I like I like the uh, the candidness of it uh, how, how it's just just uh, it, it, they don't take it too seriously. They show the softer, lighter side of it. It doesn't have to be so stuffy and in a suit. So anyway, it's Tuesday. We had our long Memorial Day weekend. We paid tribute to our fallen soldiers here in Desert Hot Springs on several days, but on specifically Monday there was an event at the at the Veterans Park. I didn't make it down to the VFW post. Uh, I'll have to get to know Jeff Horton a little bit better uh, before I kind of you know wander onto his territory and. And start to, you know, discuss things with him and find out what how his brain works. Uh, I did have a long conversation with him back in uh, last year when I was running for mayor, and he, uh, I went up and met him at one of the, the trick trick or treat event. I think at uh, Mission Springs Soccer Park. So anyway, that those two things happened and uh, took place. It was beautiful yesterday. I guess it was a flyover over the Veterans Park. Uh, I got I I saw it flying, but I wasn't quite there yet to the park before. Um, I, I missed it being at the park, seeing it overhead. I, I saw it fly over the town. So, uh, lots lots kind of moving, lots happening in the city. It's, uh, uh posted a couple articles. We can first look, I guess, at, at uh, newsanddhs.com, independent news, DHS, Desert Hot Springs. Uh, your only independent uh, alternative feed of news besides the mainstream lapdog news which is owned and controlled by most local governments so you'll you'll find them uh, work lockstep with the city governments re uh, regional governments the county government state government they're bought and paid for they do what they're told they write the stories they're told even the ones that are that criticize people who are in government uh, they, they can't seem like they're completely bought all the time so they have to run dirt stories and, and uh, my belief is that they call them ahead of time and they say don't worry about this one we're gonna we're gonna bash you but you're gonna come in come out of it smelling like a rose I believe they do that because they they can't act like they can't look like they're completely owned so uh, you see some stories bashing them here and there and we still lost our chief he's he seems to be floating around our our social media you know, chatting with people here and there, liking things, saying, um, you know, miss you guys, I, I'll be right around the corner, or I'll be right down the road, uh, whatever he's saying. So, uh, just strange to me. Not strange in a, in a way where I'm sure something's going on, but you, you have to wonder whether there's a there's a dimensional thing going on here. You never know. I mean, the guy the guy spent a lot of years as a, a chief, and for something that small, I mean, I, I really don't think what he did was that big of a deal, you know. I mean, he... It's between him and his wife, but you know the the mob jumps on him, and and it's about public uh, perception. If if the if the residents think it, they they're if it looks like the residents aren't going to get over it too quickly, then he'll step down. But you know maybe maybe down the road I I, I could see a possible scenario where down the road he, you know the, that that investigation group. I don't think they're done. I think they're doing uh, looking at his stuff, 
you know, he admitted to some stuff, but they may come out and they, they may find something, let's say, for example, more damaging about the woman or more damaging about the detective. And what that'll do is that'll then push the detective and the girl that were involved down and, and Dale Mondry back up. So it's, it's always about public perception. Right now, Dale Mondry's down and the, 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 the couple are up. But, you know, like I said, that investigative group may find some real bad dirt on them and then release it and boom, Dale Mondry's back up in the public's mind. And maybe he'll get his job back. Who knows? I don't know what, what's going to happen. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I, I, I play out different scenarios in this, this chess game that they play with, with the public because it's not, it's not uh, simple. What they're doing is, is very very uh, polished and, uh, and learned over many decades of them playing these games. The game that I call it. So uh, speaking of calling something something, I'm, I'm calling this show The Build Up. And in case you're wondering what what that means, the build-up means I'm building two things, maybe more. One thing it means is I'm building you up. I'm building you up with information and data that you may or may not have already known. But I'm building up people. I want to build up people's minds, build them up stronger. And that's that's what one reason the build-up. Uh, one reason for the the term build-up. And I'm going to getting some graphics together to have it, you know, displayed. At different times, I'm going to be able to uh, have some ads, you know, for the for the website. I'm going to scroll through that. I'm going to go to breaks. I'm going to play those ads. Things like that are all coming. Uh, another reason for the build up is is I believe we're building up to something. And uh, we well we always are, but I, I think something something bigger and greater is coming. Uh, better something much better is coming. So we're building up to that. We all know something something's shaky. Something's rocky. We know something's going on, and um, one of the ways I, I kind of describe what's going on is, and I love, I love visuals and, and, you know, at the state of the city, I don't know if it was the mayor or somebody who talked about somebody who used metaphors, you know, I used metaphors during the campaign and the mayor during the state of the city talked about somebody who used a lot of metaphors. I think it was a rock climbing guy. The climbing guy said he, he taught with it, using metaphors, which is, I love good. So if you had a, you know, a, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not really that that great at it, but if you had, you know, let's say these, these jellyfish are representations of the people in power, okay, because we have the power, we the people have the power. Uh, it's, it's really just a bunch of jellyfish that are in power, so there's, the, there's a drawing of jellyfish. Now we have, what we have is a, a steel cage that is wrapped around them that makes it so that you can't reach them. So they've got, they've got bars across the top. So you got jellyfish protected by a steel cage. Now that steel cage represents the, the, the media. It represents, um, what else could be, uh, it, yeah, well mostly the media, it's Hollywood. It's all of the entities that, that are there to, to break down your ability to get to the jellyfish who are ruining your life in some ways. So I believe the buildup that's happening is that we're, we're, we're working our way through that cage. And I don't mean harm to the jellyfish, I just mean we, we, it's not a level playing field. The, the field is, is favored and slanted towards the jellyfish. The jellyfish are, are uh, weak, you can, you can stick a fork in them and they're done. Uh, so we have that kind of metaphor going on, where we have uh, jellyfish controllers who, uh, in, in a, any level playing field without the steel cage around them, you just roll right over them. Because you have truth, you have logic, you have discernment, you have, uh, you have uh, your, your free will, you have, you have so many things going for you. But because they put a cage around the controlling jellyfish, you can't, you, you're stuck for a little while until we work through... Uh, the cage to, to make the pl uh, field of the level playing field. So that's what I believe uh, the, uh, is a good name, good reason to use the, the name the build up, because uh, we're building up to, to getting in there, and, um, and it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Uh, check in the front page of uh, Independent News DHS, newsanddhs.com. Over the weekend, several articles went on. Um, there, oh, lots of them. There was an interview. Wow, look at this. Okay, so we, we covered that back on the 25th, and then we had a new interview series, which actually turned out to be about uh, Mr. Bill Hawkins and Mr. Eddie Johnson. 
uh, came here in studio with me and sat down. We had a nice conversation uh, both times. Um, one with Mr. Bill Hawkins and the second one with Mr. Eddie Johnson. And the articles are there. You can click on the article. You can read um, a bit about him and his courage. And, and then we can, you can go to the video at the bottom. There's a video of the whole thing posted at the bottom right down here. You can play that. And, uh, you know, covers a... Got emotional at times for him. He got a little choked up when he talked about a, um, a Cessna that ended up uh, over, over the carrier he was serving on at the time when the fall of Saigon happened. And he, uh, he knew, he, when he was telling the story, he started, he started tearing up right here because he remembered the, you know, the family. He, they were so far out at sea that the Cessna showed up, found this carrier, and you know, he knew that if they didn't allow the Cessna to land, this, this whole family would have died in the sea. You know, and he saw the children in the car, in the plane when, after it landed. They got it to land on the on the deck. But he tells the whole story in the in the interview I did with him. And then, uh, so that's nice. That's that was a really nice visit by him. I like him a lot. He's a real soft spoken, mild mannered guy. And then uh, another story came up: the first swim movie night for families in Desert Hot Springs considered a success. So just with a simple search of Desert Hot Springs uh, movie pool on social media, I found uh, somebody posted a really neat picture. And uh, it was a public post, so I, I, I copied it and then posted it and gave credit to the person who posted it down here at the bottom. So that was nice, and I posted all the dates here. So I'm looking to be a, uh, a place where you can go at the top of the page, because the top of the page is like a calendar up here. You'll see first swim night, then you'll see whenever I click to coming events, uh, you'll see it appear up here on the top. So you can go to coming events anywhere on the page here. And um, I'll go back to the main page. You go to coming events, and it's it's got all the articles with coming events in it. So you'll have the uh, the state of the city was on there. It'll stay on there for a while. Um, where am I here? Oh, here it is, right here. Coming events. So if you click coming events right here, you'll see all the articles that I tagged coming events in. So you can hopefully, and I'm going to refine it, I want to eventually put a calendar on there. We can click, all, click on the days of what's coming up. So I want to be, a, again, a clearinghouse of all the, all the upcoming events that I can find on the city's calendar, on social media calendars, on uh, you know, news. Desert Sun sometimes posts things that are coming up in Desert Hot Springs. So wherever I can scour and find information uh, about an event coming, I'll put it up on there. And it'll get better and better. What else do we have here? We have the... Should have the Eddie Johnson, yeah, a special Memorial Day weekend interview with Army veteran Eddie Johnson. So you can go through and read, read that. There, a couple of strong highlights in that interview are pretty interesting. We talked about some pretty uh, offbeat stuff that that um, he was uh, gracious enough to share and kind of delve into a little bit with with us. So there's a story that you can, you can you can zoom in on your on your mobile device. You can zoom in. You can probably read some of the articles that he's got on that board that he brings around with him that I uh, added in, and there's him with Goldie Hawn. He said that Goldie Hawn lives in Desert Hot Springs? I did a search, and I found they have a Palm Desert. He, her and Kurt Russell have something something in Palm Desert in the past, but I didn't know about Desert Hot Springs. That's cool. And uh, there's other, other paperwork that he gave me that I, I added into the article. And then, so that's Memorial Day weekend, and that's, that's over, but we still want to remember, I guess, you know, but it's officially over. So then, then I attended the ceremony, at Veterans Park. I did a little article about that. And then this, this one popped up. This was interesting. I guess the Desert Hot Springs Spa uh, had some issues with the health, health department. And I uh, linked to the article. And um, that, was, that was pretty interesting. That, that got a lot of attention, I can tell you that, on, on social media. That, that, that one got some traction. Some people found that pretty interesting. Because I, I do have access to the the stats and the analytics and it's you know the site's doing very very well I can tell you that extremely well and that one uh, popped up and got a lot of clicks um, um, I'm just I'm just sharing public stories these are these this is information that's out in the public and I'm, I'm just copying what somebody else wrote so don't shoot the messenger Riverside County home prices rising four times faster than wages this story I, I found about a family in Riverside 
uh, and it even says that Southern California homes are, these Southern California properties are out of our range. So the home prices increased four times faster than wages in Los Angeles Orange County in 2011 to 2018. So it's, it's, it's getting very expensive to buy a house and it's pricing people out and it's causing a big demographic shift in a lot of ways. Because people are, are moving to, like for example, in this article, people are moving to, considering moving to uh, another state, Idaho, I believe is where they're thinking about moving to. And then today's story that, that went up live this morning was about an administrator of a Desert Hot Springs Rent and Rave group in Desert Hot Springs. And, and the... The strange anomalies in, in how how people get by with being so I don't know I don't know if bizarre is the word for it but it's they it's amazing there, there's a Stanford research uh, project that came up and this was uh, decades ago and it revealed that people when given power I mean they they just they just start I don't know, some people, I don't, want, I don't think all people, I don't want any power. I, want, I, want, I, just want, I just want to fix things. I just want to fix the city the way I want to see it fixed. And I don't think I'm being unreasonable. I think the downtown can do a lot better. I was in Palm Springs yesterday, walking around, and it was so enjoyable just to walk all the sidewalks and see all the life and all the people. We can have that here in Desert Hot Springs. Pearson's a great place for it. But the visionaries of our city don't see it that way. Maybe they do in 40, 50, 60 years when we're all gone. Maybe that's what they're they're building up too. I don't know, but I, I it can happen immediately and, and not immediately, but it, it, if we start today, you know, today we could we could be there in a couple couple years. So, but they obviously see things differently. So that's why I keep pushing. I'm I'm interested in fixing this city. So Stanford Research Project, and this is this is uh, tied to that article about the the Facebook administrator. Um. I'll look for it. What, it. what it found was it, it put kids in a, in a closed environment and it gave them roles. It gave them, uh, college students had roles to play. One was the warden of the prison, one was, and they weren't, they weren't, they were just college students, but they were given a, uh, a role to play. And they found that after uh, several days of them living in this environment where some were the prisoners, some were the warden, some were the uh, guards, that they, they, the power went straight to their head and they got, they got way out of control because they videotaped the whole thing, tracking it to find out this was a research project. And they found that the power tripping just went off the charts. And they had, they had to shut it down because it got to be, yeah, Stanford Prison Experiment documentary. So humans, can, some humans can really go overboard when it comes to, you know, the way they handle power, they they've either given themselves or they've acquired, or the way they they uh, they've built up, to, so. If you live in the Palm Springs area, we'll we'll let, we'll start this for a second here because this is this is an example I think of of what can happen to people. You gotta watch this. Would you rather be a guard or a prisoner? You gotta watch this documentary yourself. Prisoner, prisoner, I guess. Prisoner sounds like it would be a little less work. Prisoner. This is a movie made prisoner. about it. Nobody likes guards. Is this you were watching the prisoners? My graduate staff and I will be watching you. So, so what they what they're doing here is they they've made a movie out of a real life experiment that happened, and you can find uh, documentary clips of the real life experiment because I think that's more authentic. The movie they can kind of twist it a little bit, but they were about they were about to start executing people. They after after several days of being in this environment, the uh, the the, this, the college students completely lost control of their their inhibitions, and they they were they were going to start executing some of the prisoners. It seemed like I mean, it was it was wild. So, back to the story um, on the article on, on uh, 
newsindhs.com. You can read it for yourself, but it, it, it outlines how um, it's a popular group. The Desert Hot Springs Rant and Rave is a very popular group. And uh, I was in it for a little while, and I got, I got friendly with, with uh, you know, one of the administrators, the woman who was, who was the administrator in the group. She seemed very nice to me. Um, I, don't, I didn't have any problem with her. She, she allowed me to discuss and you know, open people's minds a little bit to some things that I'd been researching, which was nice, and I was appreciative of that. But at some point, uh, this guy came on, and he challenged me, it seemed like, to, to my data. And it just it escalated at one point, and he just, he just chopped me right out of the group. And it, was, it happened in a matter of minutes. It was like or seconds, it seemed like. So, for some reason, th this guy is just—he's got—he's got an axe in his hand, ready to ready to go at your at your membership in their group uh, if you rub them the wrong way, a hothead maybe I don't know, but when I came across the story of him being arrested for firing a gun into the air, I thought that's it because I could see where they're going. I mean, I, I've gone for for a long time. I've gone to check in their site and just look at the front page because I. I don't want to be part of any of these groups, so don't ever think I'm going to try to join your group. I tried, I tried to even join a, a local political group that they know I'm for and they kick me out. So, I, you know, whatever. I, it, it, that's why I'm doing my own thing. So you have your, your little fun area, and uh, I'll just sit back here and analyze you. So this guy has uh, the administrative powers for the rant and rave, and he got arrested on 325-2019. This is a, a, a shot of the... Palm Springs Police Department report. It says, um, on 325-2019, at approximately 9.50 p.m., Palm Springs Police Department officers responded to the 3,500 block of Paseo Barbara for reports of shots fired in the area and the sounds of a woman screaming. Upon arriving, officers learned that a domestic argument occurred in, at the location, and during the argument, the male half the male half of the argument, identified as Stuart McRobert, re retrieved a handgun and fled several and fired several, several shots in the air. McRobert left the location and was later found at another location by Palm Springs PD officers. McRobert was taken into custody without incident. The firearm was recovered from McRobert's vehicle and he was later booked into the Larry V. Larry Corrections facility in Banning. Oh, I should zoom in. Fire was recovered in the Roberts vehicle, and he was later booked into the Larry D. Correctional Facility in Banning on the following charge. The charge was 246.3A, felony discharge of firearm in a negligent manner. And then he had comments on the, the Palm Springs Police Department, and someone said, isn't, that, isn't this the booking photo of a man involved in an incident in Desert Hot Springs? and not the incident in Palm Springs. The paper and TV news say the Palm Springs shooter is still unknown. Thank you. This is just a misunderstanding, but the Palm Springs Police Department re responded saying, no, this man, this is a man arrested in Palm Springs, in, in a Palm Springs incident. His residence is in Desert Hot Springs. The shooting the following day is the one where there is still no suspect, and the second incident is unrelated to the incident. So, to this incident. So I'm not... I'm not point. I'm not tying him to other crimes. I I, I wanted to point out that the Palm Springs police, police Department said that he's he is a resident of Desert Hot Springs. So uh, yeah, that's a resident. That's a Desert Hot Springs man who's got um, quite a bit of power by uh, allowing people to get information on his page or not. And um, you know, for me, it was not. And he lives in Desert Hot Springs, and he goes to Palm Springs, and obviously, and when he, one of the times he was in Palm Springs, he. The police found they think it was him firing a gun, so booked him on that. So when I came across this, I thought to myself, "This, this is this is just too strange to not uh, have an article about." Because I had known, you know, there was so much hypocrisy um, in in what was going on with that, and you know, so many people grovel to these administrators. Do your own thing. Start your own group. Who cares? What do you what do you have to be beholden to these people for? So they're, you know, they they don't like what you're gonna say, what you say, and it's always a socialist or communist. It seems like that, that runs these things. It's always, it's always, you know. I think there's a there's a good reason for that. That we'll maybe get into later. 
down the road. So you've got um, these strange people that, you know, love to con tell you what you can and can't see. They, uh, they participate in capitalism, but they're for, you know, socialism and communism and all that weird stuff like that. And, you know, they, they just, you know, I, I've got the, the ties in here to, to uh, the city councilman now, who was, was a candidate at the time. Um, and I remember, I remember very well seeing a news article that came out right before the election. And it was, it was so phony. I mean, it, it was so absurd that seven days before the election, one sign gets torn off of a guy's mailbox and the news jumps all over it. Mario, Mario what's his name? Uh, the reporter for the uh, three, News 3. I know him. I, you know, I, I've done a report with him. So, yeah, right here. So I, I included it in the link here in this news piece. So, this, this news story ran, okay? And right after it ran, I was watching, I was watching uh, local channels and news media for what was said about this. And the guy in this piece that I'm writing that I wrote, he said it was his house. So, that's not the, that's not the story, that's a new common one. Political sign vandalism in Desert Hot Springs caught on camera. So, no, oh yeah, Vince Marino. October 29th, 2018. So that's seven days before the election. Roughly. A week. <laughs> right, a week before. Here's, here's your laptop media, okay? So when, when controlled and predicted puppet candidates run, the they call the news and say, Need you to write a story. We got a story here, and they say, "Okay, yes, sir." But if you call and you say, "I'd like, I've got, I'd like to tell you a story about my my neighbor who, who um, you know, own who lives in a house owned by, you know, one of their favored favored politicians," they'll say, "Ah, sorry, we can't cover that." So if it's dirty about the the, the puppet candidates or politicians, they won't cover it. But if it's positive for them, oh yeah, they'll cover it. So the sign that was vandalized is one of many supporting, one of many supporting Desert Hot Springs City Council candidate Gary Gardner. Oh, they, see, they slammed everything to us. This is your guy. It's, a kind, it's kind of sad that people think they have to take out their frustration, whether it's me or the guy who put it up, or life in general, by taking political yard sign, ripping it up and throwing it in the street, said Gardner. So there was video of it. I remember this, this article came up, and, and, and it was as far as a $3 bill, in my, in my view, right off the bat. So the, this, this guy, um, this administrator for Desert Hot Springs Rant and Rave, he jumped on and said, that's his house. Now, it was security camera footage pointed right, right at the mailbox that showed somebody in the dark running up to the sign and ripping it and lighting it on fire or something like that, something goofy. But that can all be staged, okay? Anybody can dress up as a guy ripping a sign down, run up in the dark, pull a sign down, could even be the owner of the home, who even knows? But it's so phony. That's, and that even shows how phony the news is. The news, you know, will report on, on a sign being ripped down seven days before the election, and they don't question if it's real, if it's authentic, who, who is the person that actually did this, what's the fingerprints. It's not even worth going into any of that stuff. It's one sign. And, but, you know, it, it's, it's for sympathy. It's meant to be sent out there in the public to go, that's cruel. I'm going to vote for that guy. That was really mean to do to him. That's all it is. It's PR. That's all it is. So, that's what it is. Right there. It's the jellyfish being protected in, an, in a steel cage, metaphorical steel cage, where you can't touch them. You don't have that protection. So it's an uneven, unlevel playing field. It's slanted. It's slanted in their favor. So, uh, Going back, that um, that article I think is very interesting. It's one of the longer ones, and it's got a lot of links to to different things <clears throat> built into it. So go through it, read it, um, break it down, look at the um, screenshots, things like that. I think it's it's an interesting one because it what it does <clears throat> it sums it up at the end of the article where it says. What this all leads to is that shady characters who behave in shady ways 
and that are well connected to shady government servants in Desert Hot Springs always protect one another. And not saying anything at all is still an answer. So if if this guy um, is well connected to people in the city of Desert Hot Springs and they don't come out and, and condemn this or oppose this, uh, at least as a as an as an allegation, I mean, I'm probably going to have his day in court, and I'll follow it. I'll, you can pull up the court cases and follow and see what happens with it. It's probably going to be dismissed because he's got connections. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. But if you've got um, to protect one another. Desert Hot Springs has this gaggle of boobs that always run together before one of them gets in trouble, and when one gets caught doing allegedly stupid things, the shady, well-connected people in the same circle act like nothing happened and continue to work with them. So it's outrageously bizarre behavior for the average normal person to witness, and in my opinion, it's one of the reasons that Desert Hot Springs is held back from thriving. It is, because what I ended up with is like, we got this this goofy stuff going on with with vagrants and, and yahoos that you know float through our town. We don't have to have this kind of stuff going on with people who who have uh, positions of influence. You don't think that city council members are 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 greasing their relationship with people who run these kinds of groups so that they can look good? You think that's not happening? It's totally happening. Of course it's happening. They, they'll pretend like they don't even know these people, but behind the scenes they're telling them, make me look good. Make sure you, you get rid of the comments that are negative towards me. Make sure you... They, it's absurd to think that it's not. So, anyway, that's our uh, my local rundown of uh, my Desert Hot Springs... Um, stories that went up over the weekend and we'll go into checking I'll get some notes over here um, oh yeah I'll cover that later um, before we get into the Drudge Report uh, something I noticed happening in social media recently and that is that we're witnessing what I, what I pointed out in a previous video, which is that we have some players in our town that are, that are maneuvering themselves ahead of time into a position where they're going to be open to future elected seats in the city. And more specifically, I'm talking about uh, a woman named Donna. And I hate to see her come up so much because I, I don't... I, I, I think I would probably like her if I got to know her, but she's so aggressive with what she's trying to change in this town. And it's it's also, it's it's more of this right here. It's the same thing keeps coming up. So when I was at the Memorial Day ceremony in Veterans Park, I witnessed her with her camera taking pictures and taking pictures and taking pictures. Well, later on over the weekend, I went to her, 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 her pr profile and she plastered new pictures of her with the, with the police department. And one of them is a big head, head, headliner banner with her, with all the, all, the, all the officers. And then this, the one is of her with the, the interim chief, Jim Henson. And it's, I see the move happening. I see what she's doing. And I'm going to predict something about this. I'm going to predict that she is chosen to fill the seat of Aniela Zavala. And I'm predicting, based upon her moves and what I see them doing, because they all telegraph moves ahead of time. It's, it's like, like a big aircraft carrier. If it's steaming ahead in the ocean and you see something changing with its behavior, you can predict what it's going to be doing. Like, let, let's say you, know, you hear the engines power down. Now you, now you start to think the, engine, the ship's either going to stop or it's going to turn. And now you you know the engines power down and it starts to come to a slow. Then you see the, the 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 side jets pumping water out the side, pushing the ship, and you out the the what is it? Port left, starboard is right. So if you're facing the ship coming at you, the starboard side you start to see the water flood pumping out. And you see nothing coming out the other side. So you can imagine they're going to start turning the ship. So just by reading the activities that are surrounding the object, uh, the thing, you can start to gain uh, a view of what might be coming in the future. So with all these photographs going up, I think she's positioning herself to be in 2020 running for mayor. I think that's even as far as she's going to go. 
I think that uh, Mayor Mattis is going to move on, as I said, to other bigger things. And I think that she's maneuvering and posturing herself for a female run for mayor. And she'll, she'll sit in that seat for a little while. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. And I will, I will admit that. But you have, you have to formulate um, uh, scenarios that you, you think are possible. Because they, they do this all in secret. They meet in secret. They plan their future in secret without your, without your uh, input. And they protect their jellyfish. And they surround them. And they wall off their jellyfish so that they can continue moving forward uh, in, in the same way with the same group of people. So that's what they do. And, this, and, and what's, not, what's interesting is that this is not even just a desert hospital thing. This is everywhere in the country when you have, when you have people who, who uh, lock down, who anchor themselves down in, and then they place on city councils all yes people that pretend to be against the other ones. Then you, this is what you get. You get a, a, uh, a, a forever team that just that just marches forward and um, you know acts like this is all just some organic movement that, that is just happening on its own. So I see her I see her framing herself as this this um, you know part of the community, part of the police. I'm on their side. I, it's it's just such PR and it's so phony. I don't know how else to put it. Another thing I notice is that they they like to play victims a lot. A lot. And there are a lot of players in that team that I'm talking about in Desert Hot Springs that on their social media accounts, which is big, I mean, I can tell you on the site, on um, newsanddhs.com, I have a way of seeing how much stuff is, is looked at through Facebook. You know, for example, like people who go to the links that, that are posted there on newsanddhs.com through Facebook, it's big. It's really big. So social media is, 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 a, is a gateway to... A lot of uh, articles posted, that's for sure. So, you know, on their social media accounts, you see them, you see players in the town, you'll see them, uh, you know, pretend to be an injured bird, or, you know, not physically a bird, just, just, you know, pray for me, pray for me, and, you know, with God's help, I'll get over this, you know. It's, it, it, it's a ploy to gain sympathy that ultimately will get them um, likes, thumbs up, support, all that stuff. I never do that. My problems are my problems. I don't share my problems with anybody. I'm, you know, I don't want your attention for that stuff. Who cares? You know, toughen up, deal with it. That's how I am with myself. Get over it. And I'm, I, I have a feeling that's kind of how they are too. But they play this game where they're always saying, "Pray for it to happen for me," you know. And people go, "Oh, I feel so bad for you." Here's a hug. Here's a heart, you know, and they, they, they play these people. Oh my gosh. And it's so phony. I can't stand it. So I see her using that. I see her maneuvering and I see her posturing herself. And we had a, we got another vacancy on, um, on the, what is it? Uh, city of DHS. Where is it? Where's my, where's my page here? All right. There you are. So, city of, uh, another seat open, and it's a woman opening up. So, you've got, uh, I think it's, was it Public Safety Commission? Nina, I think her name is. News and updates, is, this, is it here? Yeah, applicant, for, okay, no, it's City Council. Public Safety Commission, so there it is. So, read more. So click here for information. Nina Duarte, is it? Yeah, Nina Duarte. So we've got another woman who, who left her seat or is, is, is uh, resigning her seat or giving up her seat on the Public Safety Commission. And, you know, this, this could be, you know, a family issue. Who knows? But I'm, I'm reading their tea leaves because that's all we can do is we can read, read the, the scratches on the bushes and, and uh, what they leave behind in their wake. Because they won't tell you, but you know what they want. You know what they want. They want that team to stay together. And they don't want anybody with a differing opinion to get into that team. That's for sure. You can count on that. So if you know where, they're, where they always want to be and go, then you can predict their moves, which means they'll pull in people who are part of their team or who they can trust. So that's a, that's a new one that came out May 21st. So what is that? Yeah, seven days ago. So 
you got a lot of lot of shuffling is the word for it shuffling of seats right now going on you got the Anna Elizabeth you got this Nina Duarte you got the Donna you got the you got the Michael Bork he um, you know he's he's shuffling around so who knows maybe he's the one male that they're gonna run for the for city council that'll say you know what we have already have three men so maybe we, what do you think oh maybe let's consider a woman and they'll go great idea Gary great idea you know it's just so phony so I'm 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 looking out for that I'm watching for that I think that might might come up there's a city so then we've got oh uh, what else do I have here I've been going on a while here so uh, some a lot of stuff going on in um, national news that potentially affects us you know I talked about I talked about um, global government I had those links to to even Obama calling for global government so you you've got something that was denied for such a long time um, I don't I don't I'm not in on any of these meetings but you know something they say didn't happen you know it started it's been going on since the 50s which is a meeting that the press won't cover at all so a Drudge Report is, is covering it. It's a uh, Bilderberg meeting. And most people don't know what it's about. But, I mean, if, if you... The best example I heard was that if you had a, a meeting going on where all of the former NV, NBA Hall of Famers were meeting for a long weekend with all of the Hall of Fame NBA coaches, with all of the current statistically... Um, uh, powerful players of today they're all meeting at a meeting a couple hundred people were meeting in a uh, in a hotel somewhere in the country the media would cover it and say what are all these people meeting here for but when you get heads of banks and heads of um, you know uh, international corporations all meeting together in one weekend the media is silent they don't say a word about it I'm not saying what's um, I know what's going on there, but I just I just read I read the moves and the moves are very strange when it comes to that kind of Bilderberg meeting. So on Drudge you can see that story Bilderberg 19 future of capitalism weaponization of social media. So because certain uh, alternative media groups over the years had shined light on this meeting and gone and covered it and seen people uh, like the head of Goldman Sachs, you know, walking around the town with no hardly any security, you know. Independent journalists were going and covering it, saying, "What are you doing here?" And they, they wouldn't talk to them; they'd run from them. They were shining light on this event happening, so they they had to eventually put together a website. And the website says, "Okay, we're meeting now." Uh, so you know you can't trust the media. The media will will, will cover for these these big corporate groups, uh, but these corporate groups have a lot of say on what happens eventually in Desert Hot Springs. So you, you need to keep keep up on on what what happens there. Um, You've got, what else do you, as ER wait times grow, more patients leave against medical advice, you know, so the system is, is uh, cracking apart, and that's why I'm calling this, the, that's another reason why I'm calling the show the build up, because it's building up to something that's very strange, but you've got to get informed so you can, you can, you, you know, if and when it happens, you know what to do. Um, a lot of geopolitical things are, are, are shaking, they're talking about the uh, San Andreas fault line, I don't know any about any of that stuff, so I, I just know... You know, if we're going to go through an earthquake, that's what's going to happen. I just run for a doorway. Don't don't put things over my head. You know, whatever. Best I can do. Have some food and water stored in case you need it. That's common sense, though. So the, uh, those are some interesting s stories on here on Dredge Report. Then uh, we'll go to Yahoo News and we'll see what might be on that. Uh, it was tornadoes in Ohio. Nothing really directly connected to us. Uh, still got every every fourth is a sponsored ad on Yahoo. They they they're puffing their page up to make it look like it's more than uh, it really is uh, because they don't have enough stories. They gotta they gotta sell airtime, I guess. Um, you know, just some some normal stuff. You know, they're going after Trump still about everything and. Uh, uh, Europe had a lot of elections. Doesn't really affect Desert Hot Springs too much, uh, and on the, only on the way where, if they're doing it there, they're they're going to try to do it here because it's a it's it's very similar stuff all over the world. Um, so we'll go to we'll go to our Google News or 
winding down today's show. We'll see what's on the Google News. It kind of pops out at me and, and um, see what the Supreme, Supreme Court leaves intact block, block. Leaves intact block on Indiana abortion restriction but allows fetal burial to go into effect. Okay, but that's Indiana. So, Central Ohio, knife wielding man kills two injured 17 in Japanese mass stabbing. You know, Japan, guns are banned. But people somehow still are able to be killed um, because, you know, they go to the next weapon. So, Merkel decides her chosen successor isn't up to the job. Um, yeah, just some some normal stuff. You know, not, not so much directly related to us. I look for things about, like, uh, Governor Gavin Newsom in California, uh, what he what stories might come up with his name on it, um, you know, economic stuff tied to him, tied to California. So I'm looking out for news that, you know, affects us in Desert Hot Springs on the local and national level. And uh, last one we'll, uh, we'll look up here is we'll go to this alternative site here uh, because they, they do bring you a lot of stuff that's tomorrow's news today. So they're covering the, uh, the Bilderberg Group uh, full agenda and participants list. Um, Joe Rogan sounds alarm on deep fake videos. Uh, Facebook bans diet and exercise advice. London Bridge Terrorist was previously hired to investigate sus suspicious packages. So there are people, uh, you know, infiltrating government in, I guess, Europe or whatever, that uh, were allowed to have clearance to be able to go investigate packages while they turn out to be a bomber. That's weird. Um, they're, they're attacking white men which is a lot of what that administrator of the De Desert Hot Springs Rant and Rave group did. <clears throat> so you got <coughs> you got this divide and conquer going on um, on our local level. Believe me, there's, there's a lot of things. We're going to cover a lot of people in our city of Desert Hot Springs that are uh, tools and levers and pry bars to separate people in this town because it's going on, that's for sure. Bilderberg 2019 to meet in Montreux, Switzerland this week. For our social media has changed politics. We've now got the chance to change. We've, we've now we've got to change the people in Westminster. Uh, so that's European politics are shifting towards what happened here in the United States with Trump. Uh, a lot of nationalism, populism is 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 happening is on the rise. Oh, that reminds me of a. There's a radio station here in 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 the west end of the valley, Coachella Valley, that I think you can pick up in Desert Hot Springs. Uh, I don't know what the call letters are, but you know they. They're kind of like groundbreaking, and they call themselves K-Gay, which is fine. I don't care. You know, it's not my business. They're, they do what they want. That's, that's free speech. Uh, I listened to it the other day. I was listening to a portion of it. It was, more, it was like a talk segment between uh, two people, a man and a woman. And they were, they were just railing on, on, you know, this guy. And it's, it's, it's like, you know, when I had my guest on, Henry Sislewski... You know how we talked about how if you were if you're part of the gay community, you had to be indoctrinated into the Democrat Party. It's just it's still going on today. It's 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 driving people onto a fake plantation. I, again, I'd feel the same way if I was going the other way. If this this right wing group was driving people into, without facts to back it up, or without information to back it up, if they were driving everybody into their pen, you know, I'd I'd feel the same way. But it's so false what they were saying. You know, they were they were saying things like, um, you know, how can how can Trump supporters uh, be for going back to the Middle Ages? You know, they're 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 flat out saying, and, and I see this on on the social media site for for um, somebody in the in the elite team in Desert Hot Springs, a political team, Michael Picardi. I see it on his posts. And uh, by the way, Michael Picardi, I'd love to come and debate you on some of your posts because I, I think you're way off base in a lot of them. So message me if you want me to because I, I, I love it. I, I'm very civil. I don't, I, don't, I don't call people names. I just present some information that is counter to what people are saying that's verifiable. So what they do is they say, if, you, if you're, um, you're liberty-based in the way, uh, for example, some of the Trump's policies, if, you're, if you lean towards that way, you're immediately like anti-gay. You hate all the blacks. You, I mean, it's this absurd exaggeration of everything that that you know. And that's what this this radio station was doing. They were saying, you know, um, 
that that some things like they were talking about Ben Carson and and he human services I guess something was being changed what they don't do is they don't go into detail about what's what the actual change is Here, and here's kind of an, a metaphor for what they were doing right if if I wanted to slant a an article or a, something that an event that happened let let's say land was opened up to the public Okay, let's say a big chunk of land, sand to snow, monument, whatever you want, was open to hikers, okay? And you didn't like that happening, or you didn't like the, the president at the time that signed that to happen. You could easily say, easily say, l let's say it's, it's Trump that opens up sand to snow, for example. Or opens up, let's say Trump opens up the Joshua, no, the, uh, the Morongo Basin Preserve. Okay, let's say Trump signs that order, Morongo Basin Preserve protects a bunch of land, okay, up there. You can now say Trump pushes for plants and bugs to be trampled, okay? Because if people are going to go walk in those lands over there, some at some point some ants are going to get stepped on. So some plants are going to get, some limbs are going to get broken, some branches might get kind of caught on your backpack and kind of snapped off. So if, if you take something that happens and you cherry pick one little bizarre thing about that new order that was signed and you thrust that out there, you can easily demonize any, anybody who, who's part of it. You know, you're for killing insects, aren't you? You're for trampling on, you know, ex going extinct bushes, aren't you? You're for that, aren't you? You want to kill all the bugs out there. You just want to murder insects. So, you know, it's such a weird time to see such ridiculous argument going on. Again, it's this right here. So the media has that platform to protect these jellyfish. These jellyfish are basically preying upon your ignorance to, to, to get in there and get you convinced that they're right. But they take strange angles on things and they don't tell you the, the, the details about it. So, I don't know why, why I got into the K-Gay thing, but it, it, it's a bellwether, kind of a sign of, of, of where we're at. You have, you have to look at two different angles of, of news today. You have to look at it from a variety of, of, uh, of, of sources. Uh, each one's going to be right, you know, a percentage of the time. 50, 40, 30, 70 percent, who knows what they are. But you got to take that in and filter out what you think is not right from lots of different angles. So anybody who, who, who does like a whiplash, you know, response to something, oh, you're for cutting, you know, you support cutting funding? Yeah, because the deficit is too high. Oh, so you're for killing children, huh? Yeah, you just want to, you just want to murder all those seventh graders, don't you? It's just, can we not please? Can we just not do that? Just be great if you you know it's 2019. You you know talk about taking us back into the medieval times, the Stone Ages. You know the discussions to where, you know, um, uh, if you if if you're a caveman, you burn yourself on the fire. You know, do you put the whole fire out? You know, do you whiplash back? No, you need the fire. You need the fire to survive the winter. You know, so if you responded the same way that that so many people respond these days, to uh, to information they don't like, then you know you're, you're no better than than a caveman that's going to make himself extinct because he he got burned in his fire and he decided the fire is no good. It's all got to go out. So hopefully this weekend got a, a guest coming on or two maybe. I don't know. Working on that right now. So it's it's uh, we'll see if that that iron and the fire if I can mold that one. And turn that into something pretty. We'll see. So that's uh, working on that. Um, I guess that's it. So until tomorrow, Desert Hot Springs, you have a great day. It's it's um, almost nine o'clock in the morning. Got to head off to work. So I love you guys. Love being here. Love doing this. And we'll do a lot more to a lot more of it. Share the articles on newsanddhs.com. Share them on in. Desert Hot Springs Facebook page. Share them on that. Comment on there. If you want to come on, message me off the page. Message me off. Uh, you can even comment on the on the website. It's got a comment section. 
So until tomorrow, Desert Hot Springs, I will see you later, and you have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.